Dust devils, you've seen them, you probably know what I'm talking about. You take a drive east and you'll likely see several of them pop up along the dry landscape of southern Idaho. Same can be said if you drive west into southeastern Oregon. Where there's one, there's usually several, to the point where you might get bored of pointing them out. Dust devils may not be the most impressive example of atmospheric pressure on our planet, but for a group of Boise State scientists, they could help us understand what's happening on other planets, like the ones we plan to visit. For the last couple of years, a small group of Boise State scientists have driven more than 200 miles to the Alvord Desert, a dry lake bed in southeastern Oregon, to chase down dust devils. What we'd really like to know is how do the physical properties of a dust devil relate to the amount of dust that they can lift? So say I give you a dust devil of a certain size and a certain uh, wind field, I'd love to know how that translates exactly into the atmospheric influence of that dust devil. And we just don't have that kind of information right now. Who'd have known dust devils were so unknown? Why is there really not a definitive explanation or understanding of dust devils? Nobody's really studied them in, in, the, in the ways that we're trying to study them right now. By using a drone. And that specific effort has never been done before um, to actually like get into the inner workings of the dust devil um, in a way that other groups have never tried. Associate Professor Brian Jackson and his team are hoping the information they gather, like interior pressure and temperature, as well as the actual dust that sticks to these sticky notes, will help with another project that's a bit further than a four-hour drive. Until dust devils were discovered on Mars in the 80s, they were a little bit of a, of a novelty, but when they were discovered on Mars, suddenly there was this uh, much broader relevance, and so people began studying them. On Earth, Brian says, dust devils may play a small part in regional air quality, but on the red planet, dust and the devils that scatter it carry a much bigger role when it comes to climate. The Martian atmosphere is much, much thinner than the Earth's atmosphere. It's like 1% the same uh, atmospheric density. And so putting a little bit of dust into the atmosphere on Mars actually can heat the atmosphere quite a lot. Mostly because there's a lot of them. Hundreds of thousands, millions a day. I mean, it's a lot of dust devils. So what BSU learns out here, they hope to turn into guidance for when we make it to Mars. Dust on Mars actually has some toxic chemicals in it. And so as we think about human exploration of Mars, we need to be thinking about how to uh, mitigate uh, the effects of dust. And dust devils is, is an important source of dust on Mars. And so it, we really need to be thinking about those kinds of processes when we're thinking about human exploration of Mars. And flying a foot-long machine right into the middle of them may be the key. Flying close to the ground through small dust devils may be one of the most important ways to study the most important dust devils on Mars. And basically, by learning how much dust a dust devil can lift in a dry lake bed in southeastern Oregon, they can use that to determine how much will be lifted into Mars' atmosphere. Brian Jackson says they have not been out to the desert for a while, though, since the university has put a stop to travel because of COVID-19. But their research project is funded for the next three years, and NASA is planning on launching the next Mars rover this summer. It's known as Perseverance. Brian says it will have instruments suited to study dust devils, and they will have access to that data to use for their project. By the way, Brian is the lead author of a new study of dust devils on Saturn's moon Titan. NASA is planning a mission there in 2034, and they plan to use drones to figure out what's happening there.